right, we're back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa and uh, time for our first major conversation this morning. Um, the returning officer for the Adamawa State Governorship election, Professor Mohamed Meli, uh, on Tuesday declared Governor Ahmadu Fintiri the winner of the state governorship poll. Well, Fintiri secured a second term in office, having scored 430,861 votes to beat the rival All Progressives Congress candidate Aisha Dahiru, popularly known as Binani, who amassed 398,788 votes. Also on Tuesday, the Independent National Electoral Commission and Nigeria's Electoral Empire said it had asked uh, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa, to draw the attention of the appointing authority, these were the words of Feinick, uh, to the behavior of the state resident electoral commissioner, Huru Yanusa uh, Ari. Uh, Fintiri's victory took place 48 hours after Binani was controversially declared the governor-elect by Yunus Ahari, um, the resident electoral commissioner. Joining us for continued analysis on this concluded Adamawa uh, governorship elections, I'm glad to say we have two analysts uh, on uh, video link. Dr. Omoshala Deji is a political scientist. He joins us from uh, an undisclosed location in Lagos. <laughs> and Abraham Great is a public affairs analyst tuning in or joining us rather from Ottawa in Canada. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Thank you for uh, the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I'll start with you, Abraham, in Ottawa. Um, I've been asking people this question I want to ask you guys. Describe the Adamawa election, the governorship election in one word. What word would that be? You know, uh, Abraham Lincoln was saying that, you know, um, the ballot is not a gun. You know, the, the voters are for the people. The, the, the Nigerian uh, democracy is maturing, but it doesn't appear that the, the politicians are maturing along with it. Uh, what do I mean by that is that every test that we see the democracy go through is something that matures the country or that should mature the country. So when we compare 1993, uh, to 2003 and stuff like that. What we want to see is the fact that our institutions are now maturing. But what I found is that um, the politicians themselves, not a lot of them seems to be maturing, even the ones that are older, because the same mentality that they have of, uh, of you know, for example, the two basic things that affect how people behave in Nigeria is traditions and religion. And I think the two things play a, a, a great part in the Adamawa election. Mm. So, so give me your one word to describe the the election. I describe the the, the, the election as um, um, the, maybe the best word that I'll just use as is immature. Okay. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use any word that is too harsh because we need to know more of what happened in that election. So I see a lot of people making conclusions, blaming Benani, blaming INEC, blame. We need to see all the component of exactly what I what happened. And I'm very sure that tradition and religion also play a role in that election. Hmm. You tell us more about that uh, as we go on. Uh, let me go over to you, Deji. How will you describe the Adamo election? Um, and maybe you can give us your one word. Well, if I'm to describe the Adamo election in one word, I use the word disgraceful. Disgraceful in the sense that you find a resident electoral commissioner who is supposed to know the um, limitations of his duties. Now, for him to ask Octavius to go ahead and declare the result of an election and the whole world was watching, that is disgraceful. Now, disgraceful in the sense that you would also expect INEC to have learned lessons from the fallout of the presidential election, the gubernatorial election, and of course the, the, the main election itself, that so that there would have been some um, good changes during the supplemental election. But that um, has not taken effect. So I would rate it disgraceful. Disgraceful again in the sense that um, the presidency and INEC itself, in terms of appointment, now, 
don't they do a thorough background check? How were, were they able to appoint persons of the, such a questionable bias and character to such a sensitive office? What happens to the National Assembly in terms of scrutiny? Again, that qualifies it to be disgraceful. Disgraceful again in the sense that when the, um, uh, the false declaration was made, by the resident electoral commissioner, you find the commissioner of police at the and the head of the DSS um, giving him protection. Is the commissioner of police not aware? Is it that he didn't read the the, 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 the electoral act at all? Is it that he didn't take his time to familiarize himself with the functions of the resident electoral commissioner? Is it that he has so much incompetent men and aides? that none of them has read that act and could have advised him accordingly. Seeing somebody that has spent so many years in service and has risen to an everywhere right of being a commissioner of police, that is disgraceful. The um, head of the DSS in that state, it is disgraceful. Now, for the citizens themselves that went all out to re rejoice after the, um, the false declaration was made, shows the low level of education, shows the low level of electoral knowledge. That, again, is disgraceful. Now, for the APC gubernatorial candidate herself, now, if she has been a senator before, that means she should be conversant with the laws of the land, especially the law that guides an election that she is participating in. For her to have gone ahead, to read the um, the acceptance speech, as she did just a um, few minutes or hours after the false declaration was made, and for her to even rush to court to seek the ratification of the court for a false process, that is disgraceful. For a lawyer who advised her to go to court, whether because of, you know, country had, and of course they will have one or two financial gains and all that, that is disgraceful. All right. For the Minister all of right. State... Uh, you, you, sorry, you, you just, may a have, just a moment. Kobe. You may have just succeeded a moment. I need to, say this. to convince us and not confuse us that the election is disgraceful. I'll give you your, 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 your one sentence to round it off. Oh, oh, okay. No, um, I just want to round up with um, someone we know that usually kind of like come on air, try to muzzle the press, give some, you know, argument back and forth with the person of the Minister of State um, for Labour, I think, that's Festus Kiyamu. For him, as a senior advocate of Nigeria, someone that, you know, you, you always claim good knowledge of the law, for him to have rushed to his tutor and do, to congratulate someone that was falsely declared, that is also disgraceful. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to go to some headlines. Um, and Abraham, I'll come back to you. From last year, um, this one is from August 29, 2022, you know, you know, history is very important. Sometimes we forget easily in this country. Uh, 2023, Buhari under fire for appointing APC members as INEC Rex. Uh, August 2023, same August 23, how Buhari appointed APC party members as resident electoral commissioners. Another one, uh, Nigerian Senate confirms alleged card carrying member, ruling uh, APC members. Now, of course, it's alleged, and I must point that out. I must point that out. Um, over 70 CSOs asked Senate to reject nomination of APC members as INEC. Now, I don't have any of that information as to whether they actually are actually card card members. These are headlines from various papers I'm just quoting. Serap, this is September 2022. Serap urges President Buhari to withdraw nomination of alleged APC members as INEC Rex. Um, do you think that some of these headlines, in fact, there's another one. Uh, withdraw list of nominees and consult Council of State, Falana. Let's talk about INEC Rex. Do you think that there's a you know, relationship between these headlines and what we saw play out in our Dama State um, governorship election? Oh, definitely. You know, uh, like I said earlier, uh, Abraham Lincoln said that the, bullet, the, the ballot is stronger than the bullet. Uh, we need to get to a point in Nigeria where the ballot is actually very strong. Uh, and you know that it cannot be manipulated, that the sacrosanity of the electoral process will determine the integrity of the country and will increase the value of the country. So when people see ahead and they are forewarning, uh, you know, circumstances in which people could be co uh, compromised, 
uh, that needs the institution, maybe the legislatures need to pay attention to those kind of things. The, the judiciary also need to pay attention. But we're still at the state. That is why I use my word carefully. I, I was not, I could not be as emphatic as my uh, colleague in the studio because of the fact that I only have a balcony view. Uh, I was not there. So maybe Deji will be there and see things even more and I'm far away from where I am here. And I, I can see immature that the Nigerian democracy is maturing, but the people that are in it are immature. So the other thing about you know the headlines that you read is that we are also in a situation in Nigeria that people can cry foul almost for so many things that sometimes to actually know what the the court the, the the way the court is going to rule you don't even know if they have ruled right or not because people sometimes play every role in the book so we have to also be careful to allow the judiciary to also do their jobs but i see a gap that has not been properly filled. if people have been identified to be uh in a position to be compromised and they have been let loose to, to just go like that the process is immature all right, um, INEC, have you, as you've seen, has written too, because, you know, um, the talk has been about the wreck, what will happen to him, will he pay uh, the maximum penalty, which includes uh, uh, an option of fine or imprisonment or both. Um, will he be sacked and all that? And some analysts have been on, on record as saying that, you know, the, the commission doesn't have the power to sack who they did not appoint. And we can go through the Electoral Act and see uh, what... It says about, you know, appointment into the commission and all that. Um, uh, what do you think, uh, Deji? Do you think that we've seen some of these characters get into such positions and do what they do uh, because of the mode of appointment by, uh, of the resident electoral commissioners, for instance? You think that's played a role in, you know, the, the things that we're hearing they're doing? You know, we can look at what happened in, in Oshun State before now. Um, the man was transferred to Lagos State. There are still allegations, you know, of complicity uh, and, um, and bias by the wreck in Lagos. Allegations, I, I repeat. We can go to River State. Um, we can go to, uh, of course, Adamawa State and other states around the country where wrecks uh, have been accused of um, bias for in favor of one party or the other. So what are your thoughts on, on the way they are appointed and if it plays a role in some of these allegations? Well, with the kind of winner-takes-it-all politics that we play and the desperacy of politicians to grab power, it is not unexpected that people with political bias, political affiliation, political loyalty would aspire to um, become officers of INEC, especially for sensitive positions. Now, it now goes on the person appointing them and the person ratifying the process of the appointment, which is national assembly, to make sure proper scrutinies are done. And even when those are not done, when members of the public begin to scrutinize them and they begin to bring out maybe their images or something that shows their affiliation to any political party, any political party at all, you know, then I think the process should have been stopped. So um, I'm not surprised that people of political bias will find their way because even if they don't want to, even if they are scared, politicians, you know, um, as we have it in this country, we give them the encouragement that it is possible. And of course, you know, let's try if you can sail through. And if such a person eventually sails through the um, nomination and screening process, the loyalty of such a person lies with uh, whoever facilitated his or her appointment. And that is why we can see the, the desperacy uh, for the Adamawa wreck, because it is believed that he would have had a kind of like a proud knowledge, a, a kind of like bad view of the result of the um, election before it is announced. It would have had like, like a backroom view. So for him to have gone ahead desperately, definitely, you know, he must have been listening to the voice of some of the powers that be that, okay, um, we can exploit the law. Once INEC has made a declaration, then it is only the court that can obtain it. But INEC in his wisdom has acted rightly by instantly saying, no, we are against this, and um, this cannot stand. Now, for such action, what I think should be the consequence is being banned 
from political office itself, being banned from holding any um, appointed or electoral position in the country. Let me use the university system as an example. If you are caught cheating in the examination, if you are caught with any exhibit, is it, it is as good that all the courses that you've taken earlier, you've been cheating. And the university kind of like presume that if you are forgiven, you will also cheat your way till you graduate. So the, 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 the consequence for that is rustication. I think we should kind of like imbibe that culture into our political system, whereby if you act wrongly politically, and especially if you are found guilty as a politician for having read your way, the court should not only obtain that election. There should be consequences for action. And one of those consequences should be life ban from whether elected or appointed position. That means you cannot contest and you cannot be appointed. That renders you politically useless. Now, it is important because when corruption was becoming um, a major issue in China, they imposed if you are found corrupt, you will be executed, whether we like it or not. Political corruption, rigging, and, all, uh, 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 and associated issues are major issues right now in the country. And we need to take drastic steps. Politicians right now are finding their way around the technology. But when they know that there are unbearable consequences, I use that word, unbearable consequences for their actions, which is imprisonment and a life ban, it should be, I, I don't want to hear option of fine, because if you look at the consequence, if you aid the, 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 the emergence of a false candidate, it has an impact on governance, development, and you, you, the way Nigeria is being governed now, you see a lot of our people suffering, you see the politicians, they are so bold that they don't even care about the people. If you can get the recruitment process right, it will have impact on performance and the overall development of the country as a whole. So it is important that we get that right. And again, I emphasize that, the, for example, for the Red Electoral Commissioner, even if the law is going to be amended, or people that commit such um, infraction afterwards, it should be their uh, imprisonment and life ban from both um, elected and um, appointed positions. Hmm. Hmm. DG is not uh, holding back his punches at all. <laughs> um, but um, uh, 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 I'll come back to Abraham. Um, he's given his thoughts on, on, on this appoint the issue, and especially I was asked about the mode of appointment and even removal of uh, the resident electoral commissioners. And for the benefit of, 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 of all of us, let's just go over the relevant portion of the Electoral Act 2022 as signed by President Mahmoud Buhari. Uh, section or uh, clause 6 says that there is established sub one says there's established in each state uh, of the federation federal capital territory and the local government area an office of the commission which shall perform such functions as may be assigned to it by the commission so the commission assigns the functions to the office in each state but it goes on to say uh, the resident electoral uh, uh, subsection two of section six says a person appointed to the office of resident electoral commissioner shall be answerable to the commission and hold office for a term of five years renewable uh, from the date rather of his or her appointment renewable for another term of five years and no more. That's why Mike, Mike Iguini had to leave. Now it says the resident electoral commissioner appointed under the constitution may only be removed by the president acting on an address supported by two thirds majority of the Senate, praying that the resident electoral commissioner be so removed for inability to perform the functions of the office, whether arising from infirmity of mind or body or any other cause, or for misconduct. So um, we have to even go to the Senate to vote two-thirds majority. Subsection 4 says, the appointment of resident electoral commissioner shall be in compliance with section 14 sub 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Section 4 uh, of the Federal Character Commission Establishment, etc. Act. So um, it's quite clear what the Constitution says uh, about the appointment. Um, so, so what do you think about this mode of appointment and removal? You think it plays a role you know, in all of this? And do you think we need to change? And if we do, what or how should it be done? 
or how should it be? You know, what should it be changed to? You know what I mean? Well, I, I think this election 2023 gives opportunity for us to know that as much as we've made some amendments over the 2010 Electoral Act into the 2022 Electoral Act, there are still gaps within the Electoral Act that can be strengthened. So you look, for example, from, uh, I think it's Session 126 or thereabout that begin to talk about the fines and penalty for people in electoral malpractices, there are not so much consequences for officials of INEC uh, who violate or who usurp or who mis, uh, uh, mishandle the process. The, the, the process is not strong enough. So the more we strengthen the document, the governing document, uh, the rules, the guidance, but you still have an aspect, which is the implementation of those laws. In Nigeria, it's not that we don't have sufficient laws. We have them, but the consequences are weak. Like that you were saying, in China, I mean, in China, for example, you can't even steal a, a wallet because the consequences for stealing a wallet is, more, is, is so great. You know, I, I recall that there's a big corporation in, in Nigeria that was once duped. Uh, by by a corporation in China, and I was there. Someone that I know was dealing with this situation, you know, liaising on behalf of this big corporation in Nigeria. And immediately, this young man got involved. I, I saw that the people were paying millions of dollars back to the telecommunication company that they have duped or they are they are owing. And I asked him, why would this be? Why would it be? He said, the consequences in China, they can throw you from water. They don't even need to go to court. In some cases, they will just throw you from 82 floor into the water and you are gone. So we need to be sure that there are consequences for breaking set uh, the laws in Nigeria and that those laws, I mean, those consequences are carried out. Now, saying that, let me end with this. Saying that, I am not one, I'm not a proponent of giving blanket judgment of looking over issues just from reading from what I see in the news. The Adamawa election, like I started, as an element that must be considered. I am not totally, now, I am I'm, I'm not partisan in Nigeria, but I choose candidates. I, I support certain candidates, and it may be in any party, like just like I supported Ashiwaju. Now, the, I am not 100% convinced that Benani 100% lost the election. She's a woman who is running to be the first lady that will be a governor in Nigeria, for her to come that close, it says to me that the power that be, we may not know the malpractices and the anomalies that may have gone behind the scene that have aroused our agitation, and that's why I, uh, oh, no, not our agitation, our uh, 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 lack of due process, like, an, uh, you know, acceptance speech and stuff like that. She was, it's called the law of the first mention. She is at a point where she was trying to break record, but desperation should not be included in it. That's why I call it immaturity. But the, she has the right to go, go to court. You and I may not see what she sees. So, but, and the, 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 the job of the, uh, the rep, their job is to be able to administrate, to manage the process, to see. So we would need to see their entire report we will need to see exactly what goes on, not just to say because she announced she did this. We are all human beings. If you have been disenfranchised, there are ways that you will react. I am not, especially if a woman like that, who uh, is not a Christian, is voted for unanimously by Christians, and if, she, if she's just about uh, 10,000 or something votes away from winning the election, I do not want to underestimate what the power of the incumbent would have uh, uh, meant the impact of that on the outcome of that election. Mm. So, in other words, there may have been some rigging, and she may have felt that she actually won that election. That's why she did what she did. It is not impossible that she won. And, it is and, also not okay. impossible that the result, uh, the result that was actually probably announced, uh, it is not impossible. See, Nigeria elections and Nigerian processes always have a playbook. The, the playbook, we're not privy to it. And the entire process, we also do not know. So she might have lost the election and she might have won the election. What I'm saying is that we cannot give a blanket judgment on her, but we can give blanket judgment on INEC. 
because clearly INEC has violated his own processes. Okay, so what, process what, you, what you're saying is that the, the REC may have did, done, done, also done what he did because he noticed that there was some hanky-panky going on to uh, deprive Ben Binani of her victory. Probably. No, no matter what the, uh, the, what the REC noticed. Not to say he was right, but you're, you're trying to see deep, deeper, to, be, uh, to think critically uh, as to the possible reasons why he did what he did. That's why I study law. That's how I don't see things. I just don't see things for face value. I've got to be able to look at every every component of the situation. So the fact that she won the election and the reps notice or see the figure and notice what is going on, that still does not give the right to the ref to have announced because it is not in the jury uh, 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 prudence of the of the. Of the right. ref to announce. A yeah, you, you said all that, but now you're saying that there may be some factors behind this that we we we're not seeing. Obviously, okay. I mean for, okay. for for a woman in that state, and let's remember that at, at Dalmawa, from what I remember, is there is there is, seems to be some balance between Christian and Muslim. That's why I say the role that religion. I heard in some quarters also that it is impossible. In fact, some people came out publicly and said that it is impossible for a woman to be a governor in the northern part of Nigeria. And that means we have not really advanced. If those things are there, what role does the such kind of mindset, what role does it play on the outcome of the election? Mm. A very important and interesting point you've raised. Um, uh, you, uh, you put some punches there, even though you tried not to. Um, uh, uh, Deji, what, what are your thoughts on, on, on this? Um, that maybe we are not thinking as deeply as we should to see the possible scenarios beyond the surface. Um, and he's raised some very interesting points. Your thoughts? Um, if I can continue from where um, Abraham stopped, um, it is not... Um, it, um, it is not impossible that there might have been some unholy, um, unholy alliance during the um, election uh, in favor or against a particular candidate. But um, if we look at the Nigerian political structure and um, the, the structure of the security agencies, INEC and you know, uh, other sister agencies involved in the successful conduct of elections, such alliance, if any, often favors the candidate of the party at the central, that's the party of the national government, which coincidentally in this case is Binani. Now, the, 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 the president is a member of our party who appointed the um, INEC um, national chairman and the resident electoral commissioners. So if there's going to be any alliance they will most likely have an alliance with the APC because they would rather appoint a neutral person than to appoint somebody that they know has alliance with the PDP. Now, I haven't established that. Now, so if you look at this, the, the way the, um, the, the, the election goes, there is most likely that there is no unholy alliance against Benani. And if there is, there are forces within the system loyal to the APC that would have stopped such alliance. So what I see in this is the ineffectiveness of our institutions. When we continue to build the state around men, Nigerian um, sovereignty and authority today is built around Buhari as a person. And when the president-elect comes in, the sovereignty and you know um, institution of state is built around him. It is what he says. If, if, if Buhari says, oh, go and invade this place, the chief of army staff will not have the effort to confirm Buhari and say, sir, it is against the law because he wants to save his job. So when we begin to have strong institutions, if what happened in the United States during the election of Donald Trump happened in Nigeria, you won't find, you know, um, Anoshibajo going to the National Assembly to make sure such election is ratified. But he has no choice because he is bound by the institution of state. Else, at the end of the day, he might face imprisonment. Donald Trump is still facing the consequence of the protest that he allegedly incited after the election. So what this has taught um, us as a country, as a people, is that we shouldn't build um, our institutions around persons, but we should have strong institutions that will outlive whoever comes. The state is higher than the citizen. The office of the presidency is bigger than whoever occupies it. 
Office of the Governor, um, INEC National Commission, uh, INEC National Chairman, and all those sensitive offices. Because why? Women being will come and go. Those offices remain. The state remains. So long as God studies in his coming, Nigeria will only have a, um, have a president, or if you like, um, commander in chief, or maybe, um, well, God forbid, if you have a military government, but Nigeria will always have a CEO, a number one. So if we build um, uh, the, the, the sovereignty and institution of state around such a person, when we have good people occupying that office, the state will enjoy. But when we have bad people, people that are bound by ethnicity and religion, people of questionable past and questionable character, the state would suffer for it. So we should begin to look at how we evolve as a people and look beyond now because people are watching. You know, um, young kids are watching. So how do you convince um, um, uh, a, a, a child aspiring to be the um, head boy or head girl, you know, um, in, in his or her school that lose the election to just accept that okay, he or she has lost. So there are monumental consequences for our actions today as adults. So and we should begin to look at how to change the tune so that we can have a better society in the short and long run. Hmm. All right, all right, gentlemen. Before we can, go, can I quickly stress something yes, yes, from go. what they just said? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Are you there? Yes. Please go on. You can go on. Sure. I want to quickly just draw something from what they just said. I want I want DG to also understand this with me. Again, I I I I, I give a balcony view of situation, but does it matter in any case that there are negotiations between the two legacy parties in Nigeria? What do I mean by that? Do you know that the Osho State election and the court case on the Osho State election has an impact on the outcome? and the way that APC behaves on the general election, especially uh, 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 on the election elsewhere. So, for example, if APC realized that this woman probably won, and if she has preponderance of evidence to suggest that she won, the way they behave affects everything else, the atmosphere in the country. The other thing is that, you know, it was Edo Pekin who once said that these parties, is APDCP. You know, there are negotiations that happens between these parties that I can't just unilaterally make a decision just that somebody lost, somebody did not lose, or what have you, unless I have all the facts in front of me, maybe in the court of law, or a proper investigation of what had happened. It could have happened that they got to a point and said, okay, be me. You know what? Please, we will offer you something else. We know that you won, but People will misread to read us. If we want to fight this by all means, this is going to be interpreted as this and that. I am saying it again, I'm, I'm going to reiterate. If a woman come close to having a run-up in a northern country, in Nigeria, if she had, has a run-up and also came close to a point of where some quarters are believing that she won, I'm saying that that woman probably won the election. You cannot have a woman come that close in an election in a country like ours and not give her some kudos. That woman should not be slack. I call it the process of her announcing as immature, but I think something, a conspiracy of some sort may have gone on and some negotiation may have happened behind the bar. Uh, and this is not just me yeah. just fighting for Benani. Yeah. This is me looking at the maturity yes. of the Nigerian yeah. did, did you want to say something to that? Okay. Yeah, well, um, I'm thinking of, uh, I have a part of um, departure, but I also have some, some form of agreement with my brother, Abraham, you know, uh, in Ottawa. Well, what I think for um, Benani, I would have loved a situation whereby when the results were collated by INEC, she eventually won that election, you know. But what we have that is clear right now, except the court says otherwise, and do not forget, it is assumed that when INEC legitimately makes a declaration, it is assumed that what INEC has done is right until the court says otherwise. So right now, based on the conduct of the election and the result collected, 
the candidate of the other party won. So if Binani had won or you know, um, it is not it is not it is not good enough to say, oh, if somebody comes close in an election that and she's a woman, as society evolves, things will always change. There will always be kind of like innovation in the mindset of, of people. Um, maybe in 50 years, um, 50 years ago, nobody would have thought somebody of Kenyan origin would have been the president of the United States in, president, um, in person of Barack Obama. Perhaps 50 years ago, nobody would, would have thought that someone of Indian origin would be the prime minister you know, um, in a first country like the United Kingdom. So society evolves. Maybe Nigeria has evolved to that extent whereby, you know, when women are beginning to have their rightful place in politics. But almost is a dangerous word. I almost passed. Doesn't mean you passed. All right. The truth is you failed. All right. So almost is a consolatory word. So if Binani had almost won the election, I would have loved the situation whereby at the end of the final position, it is declared that she legitimately won. And right. if she was truly winning, then why the rush? Th thank why you very much. Very important questions. I think we'll have to have both of you back again. Uh, to talk about this sometime soon on this program. But uh, Dr. Emotional Deji, political scientist in Lagos, Abraham, great um, public affairs analyst in Ottawa, Canada. Um, thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to both of you. Thank you for having thank me. You for having thank me. you, Deji. Thank you so much, Deji. Thanks, Abraham. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. All right. Up next, we have sports. Stay with us.